around £1,000, $1,400 or 1,200 euros is roughly the amount of money many of us have to spend on our first serious road bike. Sadly, we can't all afford the dream-worthy bikes found in our top five road bikes for 2021, but it's around this price bikes start getting really good and they're noticeably better than truly entry-level ones. If you're shopping for a new bike right now, you've no doubt noticed that everything seems to be more expensive than it was just a couple of years ago. And availability is a huge problem thanks to the pandemic. We set out to do a £1,000 bike test and ended up covering a price range around the £1,000 price point. We're featuring bikes from Cannondale, Specialized, Ribble, Boardman and Vitus. You'll notice this test includes some bikes that offer more versatility than traditional race bikes. That's a reflection of a very welcome trend in the bike industry towards designs that are suited to a greater range of riding. It's now common for road bikes to have larger tyre clearances and disc brakes, making them better suited to pothold roads and riding in all weather conditions. There's a significant overlap between the rougher end of the road bike spectrum and actual gravel bikes, and we're big fans of bikes that can mix things up. At the same time, if you're riding a strictly tarmac only, a lighter weight, pure road bike is still a great choice. Before we dive into the bikes, why not drop us a cheeky thumbs up down below and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Cannondale Synapse has long been a favorite amongst endurance cyclists. It was one of the first bikes to offer features that now define a modern endurance machine. And the Synapse expands the versatility and potential of a road bike with little difference in speed. Even in this bargain form, the bike instantly feels comfortable, offering greater control and confidence for less experienced road cyclists. There are several factors at work, of course not least the Vittoria Zafiro tyres, which measure 30mm wide on the Maddox RD 3.0 wheels. Apart from the round seat tube, all of its smart form C2 alloy frame tubes are specifically shaped to counteract stress, add stiffness or increase comfort. The extensive save flattened portions of the seat and chainstays provide the latter and the save fork is all carbon, which is impressive at the price. The Shimano Tiagra 10-speed drivetrain is supplemented by an FSA Omega compact chainset and Promax Decoder R mechanical disc brakes, keeping costs down. If you worry that Tiagra's 10 sprockets and 20 gears is too few, you'd be wrong. Sharing the ergonomics of Shimano's loftier levers, the Tiagra controls give a sense of quality beyond this price. Shifting is functionally excellent with positive actions and good feedback. The gear ratios of 50-34 up front and 11-34 at the back are ideal too with a one-to-one -one bailout gear that will help you climb a wall. At 10.72 kilos complete, it's not feather light, but the bike's weight is only really noticeable when climbing, otherwise it covers ground with a pleasant briskness. As a training or commuting bike, the Synapse offers a good blend of practicality durability and performance. The handling is precise and confident at all speeds and even in this budget-friendly form, the Synapse DNA ensures it's a reassuringly stable, comfortably quick and stylishly looking way to separate yourself from winter's worst. Once famed for its quirky lugged aluminium frames, Vitus now belongs to the Wiggle CRC group and sells bikes directly to riders. The brand has become known for offering great value for money and the Xenium is no exception here. This is certainly the raciest bike on test here and it's aimed at go fast riding on paved roads. Despite the reasonable price tag, the Xenium has a full carbon frame and fork and it's very up to date with tidy cable routing that enters the top of the down tube. Vitus is more generous than most with the spec even though it's carbon, this bike still gets Shimano's 10-speed Tiagra shifting and the disc brakes are TRP Spires, pretty much the best cable-actuated calipers on the market. The Xenium has a more aggressive geometry than some of the very comfort-oriented competition, making it a great choice for riders looking to go on fast club rides or set times at a Sportif or Grand Fondo. 
It's not too heavy for a bike with disc two at 9.4 kilos for a size large, and the ride is stiff and exciting. It's geared well for climbing too, with a compact crank and a nice big 32 tooth sprocket on the cassette. We have to give a shout out to Vitus's choice of tires. We do love a tan wall at Bike Radar and they really zhuzh up an otherwise quite sensible looking bike. You get 28 and standard, but Desenium will take 32 mm tires if you want more comfort and versatility. The Vitus is genuinely hard to fault. It's more firm and focused than some, and that won't be for everyone, but that is about it. It might come as a slight surprise that the most expensive bike here isn't carbon, it's steel. The Ribble Endurance is a great looking, do it all road bike that combines the most old school of materials with some very modern features. The chromoly steel frame is matched to a full carbon tapered fork, and of course, there are disc brakes and through axles too. In size medium, the Endurance 725 disc isn't far off 11 kilograms, and that's an inevitable side effect of choosing steel over aluminium or carbon. Despite the weight though, it's a very lively ride that feels sharp and accelerates well. It may have Endurance in the name, but the Ribble is actually reasonably racy too, with fairly steep head tube and seat tube angles and a reasonably low front end. Ribble gives you Shimano Tiagra 2 with the same gearing as the Vitus. Here, however, you get Tetro M510 brakes that just aren't as good as the dual piston spires. In fact, they're not really as good as the best rim brakes in the dry, which, if we're a little honest, is a bit disappointing. We would be sorely tempted by the cheaper, lighter rim brake version of this bike, or you could spend a little more and get the 105 version with proper hydraulic disc brakes, as we think that would be a massive step up. Many bikes at this level don't get branded wheels, but the Endurance 725 is fitted with Mavic Askium discs. These are still much very entry level, but they're a nicer looking set than a lot of budget wheels. The Ribble Endurance is a classy looking road bike, and those of you who love the way steel bikes ride will find little to stop you taking it out on long endurance rides, commutes, or club rides. The Alley won our thousand pound bike of the year last year for its well-balanced ride and all round personality. It's still a fantastic entry level option that offers a balance of performance and value. The aluminium frame and carbon fork come with lugs for mug guards and rack mounts, as well as tidy internal cable routing, which keeps it looking sleek and clean. This latest model is slightly less racy than its previous iterations, with a slightly more gentle geometry and a taller stack for a more comfortable riding position. The Shimano Sora group set on the LA isn't top spec, but it is reliable and shifts smoothly. Though it's only got a nine speed sprocket out the back, the gearing feels more than ample with a 5034 crank set and an 1132 cassette. However, if you're used to 10 or 11 speed gearing, you may find the jumps between the gears a little bigger than you'd like. A 34 tooth front chain ring and a 32 tooth rear sprocket though, should be low enough to see you over the toughest of climbs without sacrificing speed at the other end of the cassette. The Alley comes with fairly basic Axis Sport clincher wheels finished off with 26mm Road Sport tyres. These are tubeless ready, so although they're not as wide as the other tyres in this test, you can run them at lower pressures without the risk of pinch flats. Talking of tyre pressure, if you want to know what the best tyre pressure is for road cycling, then check out the video I made on this very topic. You might be surprised. The link, as always, is in the video description. The main area the Alley is let down by is the Axis rim brakes, which feel wooden and don't have the crisper quality of some of the other brakes in this test. Despite this, the Alley is a likeable ride on the road, and the drop seat stays and tubeless tyres helping to give a light and direct ride feel. The stiff rear end makes it thoroughly enjoyable on hilly terrain. As well as looking fresh and sleek, its smooth and lively ride feel justifies significant upgrades down the line when the components on it wear out. 
for general road riding or as a speedy commuter, this is a great all-round bike for the price. Bike specs have got a lot less generous across the board, but the Boardman ADV 8.9 is exceptionally well equipped compared to the competition. The ADV is another genre blurring bike that's equally at home on roads or gravel and dirt. It's built around a nice, if rather ordinary looking aluminium frame with a full carbon fork and super simple external cabling. It comes with chunky Schwalbe G1 all-round 40mm tyres as standard that are perfect for mixed riding. These aren't quite as quick as pure road tyres, but they're fairly fast rolling on tarmac but usefully grippy on dirt or gravel. Where other brands are giving you cable disc brakes, Boardman specs proper Shimano hydraulic levers and brakes and they really are the best option if you can get them. The group set is an impressive mixture of Shimano's 10-speed gravel-specific GRX with aftermarket FSA cranks and a Tiagra Road front derailleur. The gearing range is very healthy, with a 4832 at the front and an 1136 cassette at the back. That's low enough for grinding up bumping fire roads, but it doesn't sacrifice high-end speed. The shifting is as impressive as you'd expect from Shimano, and the braking, if anything, is better still. Thank you, Shimano. Boardman is one of a number of bike makers borrowing mountain bike trends for its gravel and all-road bikes. The ADV 8.9's head angle is slacker than a traditional road bike's, while the reach is moderately long with a shortish stem to compensate. This approach helps make for less intimidating handling off-road. Overall, it's just a comfy, versatile bike that will do a bit of everything. You could easily load this up for extended tours or take in a long distance sportive or two. Admittedly, you will be carrying a little more weight than with a dedicated road or sportive bike, but the ADV's near perfect braking, wide ranging gears and excellent comfort more than make up for any extra mass. And if you wanted to increase its speed on the road, you could always swap in some racier tyres. So, we've given you carbon, aluminium, and steel options, with choices ranging from the very roady Vitus to the more gravel adjacent Boardman. The Boardman ADV 8.9 and the Vitus Zenium Tiagra did earn the highest scores, but they couldn't be more different from one another. It really comes down to being honest with yourself and what kind of riding do you mostly do. If you spend most of your time on tarmac, the Vitus would be a great choice, but the Boardman is much more versatile. So if you're likely to take things off-road or have a hankering to try out gravel cycling, we would recommend the Boardman. But like planting trees, while the perfect time to buy a bike may have passed you by, the second best time to buy a bike is right now. So which one would you choose? As always, let us know in the comments below. And as ever, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you'll get a notification.